Thank you very much, Pennsylvania. I love Pennsylvania. Ah, thank you very much. Thank you. I really give a very big hello to Pennsylvania. It's great to be back in this beautiful Commonwealth with thousands of proud, hardworking American patriots, which is what you are. Think of this. Who would believe this? 80 days from now, we are going to defeat a communist known as Kamala Harris. She's a communist most radical left person ever to run for office. This is not what this country needs. We've had enough of them. We're going to win back the White House, and we're going to take back our country. Kamala Harris is a super left liberal who ruined San Francisco, ruined California, and delivered a badly broken economy, a badly broken border, which gave us a dangerous world of chaos, death, and destruction. Just take a look at what's happening today. We were a respected country. Now the whole world laughs at us. We're a bunch of foolish people to have allowed this to happen. But we're going to bring it back. We're going to bring it back very fast. We'll close up the borders. We'll drill, baby, drill. We're going to do things that are going to be very good. Very good, very fast. It'll happen very quickly. But she breaks everything that she touches. But soon, we're going to fix every single problem. Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. Crooked Joe have — what happened to Biden? I was running against Biden. All of a sudden, I'm running against somebody else. It's true. You know, it's interesting. I said, who am I running against? Harris. I said, who the hell is Harris? You don't know. <laughs> who the hell is Harris? You know, she was the first one out last time. She was the first one to lose, and now all of a sudden she's running. She never got a vote. That They are a threat to democracy. Remember that. Starting the day I take the oath of office, I will rapidly drive prices down, and we will make America affordable again. We're going to make it affordable again. Under Kamala Harris and crooked Joe Biden, the American dream was dead, and it is dead. It's dead as a doornail. They'll never bring it back unless we win. If we win, we're going to have the American dream alive, all for your beautiful children, your grandchildren. We'll have the American dream. We'll be back with us. Her radical liberal policies have caused horrific inflation, decimated the middle class, and gutted the finances of millions of American families. And you know what I'm talking about, because everybody in this room has been devastated by what they've done. They have no idea they're grossly incompetent people. Real incomes are down by over $2,000 a year. Think of that. Minimum. And ours, up. Five times that amount, more than five times that amount. Her price hikes have cost a typical household a total of $28,000, and that's called the Kamala Harris inflation tax. She was there for everything. You know, when she sits and complains, hey, look, look, Joe Biden hates her, okay? Hates her. You don't mind if I go off teleprompter for a second, do you? <laughs> Joe Biden hates her. This was an overthrow of a president. This was an overthrow. They went out. You know, I spent $100 million fighting Joe Biden. They told him he couldn't win. His debate performance wasn't the best ever. But they said mine was the best ever. But they said his debate performance was it? I look forward to debating her, by the way. She'll be easier. She'll be easier than him. Her policies are so bad. Her policy — remember, her father was a Marxist economic professor. He was a Marxist, an avowed Marxist. This is not what we want in this country. And think of it. Does anyone here feel richer under Kamala Harris and Crooked Joe? 
Is anything less expensive under Kamala Harris or Crooked Joe? No. No. It's been it's been devastating. Inflation, inflation has been devastating under this group of people that have no idea what the hell they're doing. Are you better off with Kamala and Biden than you were under President Donald J. Trump? I don't think so. You know, they do polls on this stuff, and I'm at like 93%. I said, so why are we having an election? They didn't have an election. Why are we having an election? How would you like to be Biden? He's working, he's spending money, he's trying. They wanted to have a debate. That's the thing that started it all, you know? If I didn't debate him, he'd still be running right now. But I believe she will be easier to beat than him because she's a truly radical left lunatic. And with him, he never really believed it. Of course, I don't know if he knew anything. I, you know, I'm not sure. But he didn't really believe it. She totally believes it. She wants to destroy our country. With four more years of Kamala, your finances will never recover. They will only get worse. They're only going to get worse. The stock market — and — and you have some of the most brilliant people on Wall Street saying this. The stock market is only up because they think I'm going to win. And if we don't win, according to many people, including one of the greatest Wall Street prognosticators named Scott Besant. Has anyone heard of him? One of the most brilliant guys on Wall Street. If I don't win, you will have a 1929-style depression. Enjoy it. I believe that. I believe that. I believe it. A lot of people believe it. So we're not going to give them the chance, okay? We're not going to give them. And your state's going to be ruined anyway. She's totally anti-fracking. She's been anti-fracking and anti-drilling, anti-oil and gas from practically the day she was born. All of a sudden, a couple of months ago, she said, oh, I'd love to have fracking. No, she won't have fracking. Vote Trump, and your incomes will soar, your savings will grow, young people will be able to afford a home, and we will bring back the American dream bigger that we are going to bring it back. Bigger, better. Front row Joe, bigger, better, and stronger than ever before. We're going to bring it back. Look at all these front row Joes over here. They've only been, you know, we have a couple of groups here. They're at about 222 events. Front row Joe, stand up, wave your hands. You guys are great. Patriots. But I have another group from a place called North Carolina. Has anybody ever heard of North? We love North Carolina. The beautiful ladies over there. This is number what? 217. So this is number 217. And supposedly, they're happily married. How the hell does that work? Look at them. They're beautiful, and they go, oh, there's a husband. Are you a husband? Who are you married to, husband? Oh, that was a wise choice. Beautiful. Very nice. How do you handle it, right? How do you handle it? But they're great women, and they've been with us from the very beginning. They were with us from the beginning in 2016, when we had the four greatest years this country has ever had. They were with us then. Thank you very much. North Carolina. We're doing well in North Carolina. Thank you, darling. It's nice to not have to travel to California and other places, right? Yesterday, Kamala laid out her so-called economic plan. She says she's going to lower the cost of food and housing starting on day one. But day one for Kamala was three and a half years ago. So why didn't she do it then? So this is day 1305. We're at 1,305. So why isn't she doing it now? Why doesn't she get away from her nice little place with her wonderful husband, go to Washington and do it now? You could do it right now. Why does she go to the convention? Because it's a rigged convention, obviously. She got no votes. He had 14. You know, Sleepy Joe had 14, 14 million votes. She got no votes. 
She failed. She was the first one out. She failed. She never got to Iowa. Great state, Iowa. We're going to win it big. The farmers love Trump, and I love the farmers. But she never got to Iowa. She was the first one to quit, and now she's running for president. I don't know. Somebody's, somebody's going to have to explain our system to our many, many enemies all around the world. They're watching this thing. This place doesn't make a lot of sense anymore. Everything Kamala Harris says is her speeches is a lie. You know, she gets up and just lies. I was watching her yesterday. She talked about all the taxes I was going to raise. I never said that. I'm, I'm lowering taxes. Yesterday, she got up. She started ranting and raving that Donald Trump wants to put a tax on gasoline, a tax on food, a tax on medication, a tax on clothing, a tax on every single thing that was ever invented. Your hat he's going to tax. Your shirt he's going to tax. He's going to tax your wife. He's going to tax your husband. And I'm saying, I never said any of that. They make it up. I mean, here's the truth. Kamala wants to put massive taxes on American jobs and American industries. I want to cut taxes on Americans while putting tariffs on China and foreign countries to bring our jobs back home to Pennsylvania and to take in billions and billions of dollars. And I'm the only one that ever took in any money from China. China was really hitting us hard, ripping us apart. That means many, many presidents. And what happened is I put a tariff on, then I raised the tariff. We took in hundreds of billions of dollars from China. And Biden can't — it's so much money, he's trying to rescind it for a couple of reasons. Number one, he got a lot of money from China. He got like — didn't he get three and a half million, four million that they know of? But he got a lot more than that. His family made a lot of money with China. He wants to get rid of the tariff, but he can't because it's so much money, they can't do anything with the budget. A tariff is a tax on a foreign country. That's the way it is, whether you like it or not. A lot of people like to say, oh, it's a tax on us. No, no, no. It's a tax on a foreign country. It's a tax on a country that's ripping us off and stealing our jobs. And it's a tax that doesn't affect our country. And you can see hundreds of billions of dollars of tariffs on other countries also. I took in hundreds of billions, and nothing happened to us. They make less money. And you know what? Our jobs come back because there's no tax if they build their factory in Pennsylvania. There's no tax if they build their factory in the United States. So what do they do in order to avoid paying the tax? They say, let's build a place over here. No tax. Come on over. We love it. Just hire our people. That's all you have to do. It's very simple. You know, as we speak, and this really goes to Michigan more than you, but I look at Michigan and South Carolina, a lot of other places that do the auto stuff, and uh, they are building some of the biggest auto factories in the world right now in Mexico, right off our border. They think they're going to make cars not pay any tax and sell those cars into the United States. Not going to happen. Not with me. They're building some of the biggest auto plants in the world. And you know who owns those auto plants? They're built, they're made, and being built in Mexico. You know who owns them? China owns them. China is very smart. I had a good relationship with President Xi when COVID came. That was the end of that relationship. But but I had a very good relationship. But we took in hundreds of billions of dollars from China. Think of it, Bush, Barack Hussein. Do you, did you ever hear of Barack Hussein Obama? Have you heard of him? There are those that think he is currently running the country. Does anybody think? I don't know. I don't know that that's true. Uh, we know it's not Biden. Every attack Kamala makes on us is a fabricated — it's a lie. She's sort of a bad storyteller. She doesn't know how to tell a story very well, but she gets caught. She gets uh, caught up in her own words. She's not, a, she's not a very good wordsmith, they say. I don't know. We're going to find out. We're going to have a debate at some point. They gave me — the worst network to me is ABC. Worse than NBC, worse than CBS, worse than CNN. The home of George Slopadopoulos, a nasty guy. I said, George, I've had you up to here. 
so. Now he's a nasty guy. The hatred. And yet, when he interviews Biden, like two weeks ago, he interviewed Biden. It was like the nicest interview. What flavor ice cream do you like? <laughs> Georgia, I, I, I tend to like vanilla very much. Oh. With me, they get into a lot of subjects that a lot of people don't like talking about. But ABC's the worst. And that seems because they won't do it on Fox. They've turned down the Fox. You know, I have three — I've approved three debates. They've approved one. The only one they've approved is with their network. And now it came out in the New York Times, of all places, that the head of the news and the head of the whole thing, practically, is Kamala and her husband — lovely husband, best friend. Her and her husband are best friends with Kamala and her husband. And I'm supposed to do the debate. But, you know, with Biden, they thought I wouldn't do it. So they offered me something that I couldn't accept. They said, uh, the debate is at CNN in front of no audience. So far — so, so far, I'm 0 for 2. And, I, see, they didn't want to do the debate. That would have been a good idea if they didn't do it. But I was going to accept anything. And I guess we'll do it here, too, right? We'll accept anything, because otherwise she's not going to debate. She doesn't want to debate. But they said, CNN and no audience, and we want to have you sit down. I objected to that. They wanted us sitting behind a desk. I said, give me a break. We have to at least stand for the American public. Wouldn't that be nice? So that was the only thing. And I would have done it if they insisted. No, I would have sat down if they insisted, but I thought it was sort of a little strange. But I had Dana Bash, and I had fake Tapper. But I have to tell you, they were very fair. I really thought they were very fair. So Jake and Dana — nobody knows how to say her first name. Is it Dana or Dana? Nobody knows. It's been going on for 20 years. She's been around a long time. Is it Dana or Dana? And now the fake news will say, Trump didn't know how to pronounce her first name. She doesn't know how to pronounce it. But look, but Dana and Jake — I used to call him fake tapper. Now I call him Jake Tapper, because he treated us very fairly, and so did Dana treat me very fairly. I think it was, you know, just about neutral. But he kept saying uh, — you know, he gave very short answers, because he wasn't really doing too well. And I kept saying, I'll take it. But what happened — sir, you have 92 seconds left. This is not what he wanted to hear. Right, David? They said, you have 92 seconds left. Going to be your next senator, I'll tell you. David McCormick. I hope you can vote for him. I hope you vote for him. I hope you vote for him. He's a great gentleman, great hero, actually, in many ways. He's a great guy. But so they gave me this thing, and they assumed I was going to turn it down. So I have the wrong network. I have the wrong anchors. I have no audience. I like an audience. I love people, you know. It's oftentimes a mistake. Everything was wrong. So what we'll do is we'll offer him this thing that he can't accept. He won't accept it. And then we'll say, Trump didn't accept the debate. He's afraid to negotiate against Biden, because Biden's so sharp. You know, he's so sharp. He's sharp like a razor. So — but I, I surprised them. I said, I'll take it. I'll take it. And people said, are you crazy? I said, look, it's the only way you're going to debate. If we do anything else, they're not going to accept it. And these people are the same way. They offered me we, — we were supposed to have uh, Fox on September 4. And they said, no. I accepted it. I don't even know what's going to happen, because I've accepted it. They haven't. So maybe they show up, maybe they don't. But I think it's sort of on for September 4th, but I don't think they're going to come. And then uh, we go and we do the debate with uh, with ABC. ABC, again, I call it ABC fake news. So bad. They're so bad. They're so dishonest, in my opinion. Very dishonest people. But I find them to be the worst. And I, I really — I'm a professional at this, you know? Because I watch the — who treats me the worst? Now, NBC is horrible. CBS is horrible. They're all horrible. These are horrible human beings. But who treats me the worst? ABC fake news treats me the worst. And that's where they want it where her best friend — it just came out the other day, nobody told anybody about this — is the head of the whole deal, right? 
but I'll probably say I'll take it. Because you know what? They're not gonna they're not gonna do a debate. But just remember, these are phony, fake, disgusting people that hate our country. Remember that. And also remember that every attack that we make on Kamala is something that she said on tape or something that she's actually done. You know, all of these attacks are things because she said all of it. She said, I don't want fracking in Pennsylvania. She said it hundreds of times. I don't want it anywhere. We will. Then a couple of months ago, when the polls are showing that she's getting clobbered, well, actually, nobody actually thought they were politically correct. They wanted to be politically correct because they wanted, you know, they had 11 different people and they put her name in too, to be number 12, and they had a vote. She came in last. So she picked somebody. Think of it. How about the guy she picked? How bad is he? Right? How bad is that guy? David, where did these people come from? You know, he recently signed a bill in a state that I love, but a state that hasn't been won by a Republican because it's a corrupt state. But the people are not corrupt. The people are great. Since 1972, has it been won? Think of that. And I thought we won it twice. I said, there's no way we lose Minnesota. But he signed a bill for all young men's bathrooms and men's bathrooms have to be equipped with a tampon selling machine. And she turned down your governor. By the way, just so you understand, I know some of you probably like him. I don't think he's a good person. I don't think he's good. I don't think he's good. But they turned him down because he's Jewish, okay? That's why they turned him down. Now, we can be politically correct and not say that. I could say, well, they turned him down for various reasons. No, no. They turned him down because he's Jewish. That's why they turned him down. And I'll tell you this. Any Jewish person that votes for her or a Democrat has to go out and have their head examined. Because if you see what's happening with Israel and Jewish people right now, there has never been there has never been a more dangerous time since the Holocaust. If you happen to be Jewish in America, there's never been anything like it. I'm seeing things I can't even believe it. And we want to bring about unity and peace and everything else. It looks like, the, uh, it looks like they're going to have ri nothing but riots out there in Chicago. It's, uh, it's really a sad thing. But they turned him down for that reason, and they turned him down for a couple of other reasons, too. But the primary reason was that he's Jewish. And you don't think I know what goes on in their campaign? I know it well. I know it very well. She's a nation wrecker who is more liberal than crazy Bernie Sanders. You know crazy Bernie? He's pretty bad, right? She is substantially more radicalized than crazy Bernie. You cannot have her as your president. She ruined San Francisco. She ruined the state of California. You know, she was the district attorney and she was the attorney general of the state. I heard the other day, and this isn't anything, I'm just saying, they'll say he was rambling. I don't ramble, I'm a really smart guy, you know, really smart. I don't ramble. But the other day, anytime I hit too hard, they say he was rambling, rambling. You know, I get up and I make a speech. I go for sometimes two hours, two and a half hours, because you know, people are waiting outside for three days, four days. You guys were waiting out there for a long time. Front row Joes are waiting out. I don't know how you guys do it. And I feel I have an obligation to speak and speak in a certain way and speak a little bit longer. You know, how would you like it? A guy's waiting with his family for three and a half, four days. They have a tent and the tent is set up. They have hundreds of them and they wait. And then I walk in, speak for 15 minutes and leave. I don't know, somehow, would that be okay, North Carolina? I don't think so, right? They want me to speak all day. You know, when I leave, I did one two hours and 15 minutes, and I'm leaving. And they're screaming, no, sir, more. We want to hear more. I said, I can't. 
I said, I can't speak more. What the hell else am I going to say? Our country's going to hell. That's all I can say. We're a nation in decline. You know, we were talking about that before. My phrases are copied so much, right? I use, I, I use the term, oftentimes in closing, we are a nation in decline. We are a failed nation. And I think it's a beautiful phrase, although I don't like the topic very much. I don't like what it represents, but there's a certain beauty. All of a sudden, all of these candidates, including Republicans, are saying, we are a nation in decline. We are a failing nation. And I say, you know, what the hell do they have to copy me for, right? But they have a lot of words that they copy. Many of our words, we were in the plane before coming in, and our people said, we went through a list. I think we're going to release a list. Let's release it. But so many of our phrases they copy. I should be, really, that should be a, a, a nice thing, not an insult. But crazy Bernie Sanders has said a lot of things, and one of the things he's arguing about is who's more liberal. And after about two minutes, he gave up. He said, this woman is nuts. Look, people say, be nice. Have you heard her laugh? That is the laugh of a crazy person. That is the laugh of a crazy. It's the laugh of a lunatic. Have you heard it? You know, they prohibited her. They prohibited her for laughing. I, I've, you know, I've been waiting for her to laugh because as soon as she laughs, the election's over. But we're winning by a lot in Pennsylvania. I think the fracking got her. The fracking got her. But she has been prohibited from laughing. You know, she used to do an interview. She, <laughs> this is a, who the hell laughs at an interview like that? You know, I'm interviewed all the time. I may smile. I mean, they're asking you questions about things that it's not really a, it's not like a comedy club. And she'd break out. That's one of the reasons she refuses to do interviews, I think, because she laughs. It's, it's so horrible. No, it's so horrible. But. You know, she hasn't done an interview, like, in 30 days or something like that. And I do one every day. If I pass, I, can't, I just did one backstage. I just did one backstage with a very good reporter. But you're supposed to. Don't you sort of have an obligation? You know, you're running. They're going to try. This is her form of the basement. Now, the basement for him was good because, you know, they had COVID. They didn't want him to catch COVID. He ended up catching it anyway. But, uh, you know, it's a, a very dishonest. The whole system is very dishonest. But she should be at least talking to the press. She, doesn't, she hasn't done anything. But she's prohibited from laughing. They said, your laugh is horrible. Never laugh, ever. So she's walking around with her mouth, like, almost sealed shut. She won't laugh. I want her to laugh. And then we'll just claim victory. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank you very much. But we have a, a little video that we just put up. Would you like to see it? Go ahead. Just work. Yeah, I am radical. We need to get radical about what we are doing and right. take it seriously. As President of the United States, I am prepared to get rid of the filibuster to pass a Green New Deal. There's no question I'm in favor of banning fracking. We have to have a buyback program, and I support a mandatory buyback program. I believe it will totally eliminate private insurance. Let's eliminate all of that. But would you support changing the dietary guidelines? The, yes. The, you know, the food pyramid. What people yes. Are to, yes. To reduce red meat specifically. Yes, I would. Raise your hand if, gover if your government plan would provide coverage for undocumented immigrants. Where do you stand on defund the police? This whole movement is about rightly saying, we need to take a look at these budgets. Harris asserted that ICE is perceived as the modern day Ku Klux Klan. Are you aware that there's a perception? I see no. Are you aware that there's a that perception? That puts ICE in the same category as the KKK. Is that what you're asking me? I see to no peril. I'm not finished. I see none. And yeah, I am radical. We need to get radical about what we are doing. Now, over the years, and right up until the present, she wanted to openly defund the police. How do you like that? In 
Minnesota, when they were burning down the state, and in particular, Minneapolis, they were burning it down. Remember the CNN fake reporter? He got up, the one with the nice shaved head. He got up. Uh, this is a peaceful rally. This is a rally of love. Behind him, the entire city was burning. It looked like World War II, right? And by the way, speaking of World War II, she will bring us into World War III, and it'll be a war. That'll be a war like never before because of the weaponry. No more army tanks going back and forth shooting. We've left a lot of our — you know, I rebuilt the entire military, and we left a lot of that in a place called Afghanistan. You know, that billions and billions of dollars we left it. In the most embarrassing moment in the history of our country, we left Billions of dollars, 13 great soldiers killed. Think of it. Left many hostages. Many people have been left behind. But think of what happened there. We got out in disgrace. We should have gotten out with strength. I was getting out. We would have been out even sooner. But strength, dignity, we would have kept Bagram, the big air base. You know who occupies Bagram right now? China. Because it was one hour away from where China makes its nuclear weapons, not because of Afghanistan, but because of China. But China occupies it right now. Thank you very much, President Xi. Enjoy our billions of dollars of construction that took place years ago. They spent billions of dollars many years ago. One hour away, think of that, where they make their nuclear weapons. Uh, it's so embarrassing, the stupidity of the people that have run our country. But we did things the opposite way. We were very smart. We were very respected. We're a respected country. They respected your, your leader, your elected leader. But remember this. Viktor Orban of Hungary, Prime Minister of Hungary, they asked him pretty recently, they said, uh, what's going on? The world is coming to an end. He said, if you want to stop it, re-elect the United States, re-elect Donald Trump, because when he was there, we didn't have any problems. We didn't have problems. Russia wouldn't have happened with Ukraine. Israel would have never been attacked on October 7th. Never. You know, Iran was broke. Iran was broke. They had no money. They, I told China, you buy oil from them, you can't deal with us. I told that to many countries, anybody that dealt there, so they didn't buy oil. Oil's the whole thing, the big deal. And they were broke. Now they have $300 billion. Think of it. They have $300 billion now. They have plenty of money. We're run by stupid people, and we have to change it. Oh, we're not going to have a country left. We're not going to have — we didn't let countries take advantage of us. France was going to charge our corporations tremendous amounts of money for doing business in France. You know this, David. David is very familiar with what happened. And I went to my people. I said, tell them we're not going to put up with it. They're not going to charge our companies, because we want our companies to do well so they can employ people. It's sort of simple. I didn't even like a lot of the companies that they were dealing with. I should have said, oh, great, let them charge. What the hell do I care? But they're American companies. And I said to Emmanuel Macron, I said, call him, because my people failed to make a deal. I said, you make a deal, you have one week, come see me. At the end of a week, they came to see me. Good people, smart people. Very smart people. Secretary of Treasury, smart guy, Mnuchin, others. They came back to see me. Sir, we're not able to make a deal. They're going to charge our companies a tax. I said, no, no, they're not going to do it. You don't understand. They're not going to do it. Come back and see me. You have one more day. They came back. Sir, they won't do it. They've already passed it in their so-called legislature. We're not going to do it. They're not going to be able to stop it, sir. I said, we'll stop it. Get Get Emmanuel Macron on the phone. I got him on the phone. Emmanuel, how are you? So nice to talk. Oh, Donald, Donald, it is so nice to speak to you. He's beautiful. I wish I had his accent. I would have been president 20 years ago. <laughs> but I said, Emmanuel, I understand you're charging our companies a lot of money. Oh, well, you know, this has been in the works for many years, Donald. And Yes, it is done. It is really done. There's nothing we can do about it. I said, okay, good. Emmanuel, here's the story. If you don't get rid of that tax within 24 hours, starting on Monday morning, it was a Friday, I'm going to charge every bottle of wine and champagne that you send into our country. I'm going to charge you a tariff of 100 percent on every bottle. 
And you will not be sending too many bottles of champagne and wine. And he said, Donald, Donald, that is not fair. That is not fair. I said, no, no. It's not fair for you to be charging American companies to do business in your country. No, it's not fair, Emmanuel. Emmanuel, get back to me in five minutes and let me know. He called me back in two minutes. He said, Donald, we have decided that we will not be charging you any taxes for the American company. No reason. I did so many of them. I did so many. I could stand up here all day and tell you different stories. I, I just used the telephone. I could stop the war with a telephone. I could stop what's happening in the Middle East with a couple of telephone calls properly played. Horrible. Horrible, horrible, horrible. We have, we have people that are they're, they're babies. In many ways, I guess they're stupid, you know. People say, please don't use bad language. Please don't call people stupid. They're stupid people. How else do you describe it? I want to use a different word, a highly, a more sophisticated word than stupid. But there's no word. It's a perfect word. They're stupid people. I think they're also, by the way, if I might, they're also corrupt. They really are. They're corrupt. They get a lot of money from a lot of people. We're not going to let this socialist lunatic, and she's a socialist lunatic. That's the other thing. Please, sir, please don't call her a lunatic. I said, but that's what she is. She's a lunatic. She's a lunatic. She's going to destroy our country. And she's going to break our economy even more than it's broken. We have a broken economy. Our supply chain is gone. You know, you order something now. I don't know how many of you are in business, or even if you're ordering as a personal order. The order doesn't come. The supply chain is broken. Who ever thought of it? We never even talked about supply chain. Supply chain just worked. And because of what they've done, they've broken our supply chain. On Election Day, we're going to tell her that we've had enough. We said, Kamala, you are a horrible vice president. You're going to be a horrible president. We're not going to take it anymore. Kamala, you're fired. Get out of there. You're fired. Not going to take it anymore, Kamala. We're not going to take it anymore. We have a country to save. And how about the fake news? Oh, look at them all back there. Look at all those cameras. Look at all those cameras. Wow. Look at all those cameras, all those fake writers. Look at them. I mean, Time Magazine. Think of this. Time Magazine doesn't have a picture of her. They have this unbelievable artist drawing her. And I said, is that Sophia Lauren? I couldn't. Who might that be? Is that Elizabeth Taylor? They say she was a beautiful woman. Who is it? It's so beautiful. Drawing. It's a drawing. They took a lot of pictures. It didn't work out. So they hired a sketch artist. I said, I'm sure, oh, they must be celebrating the great life and times of the magnificently beautiful Sophia Lauren. And you're not allowed to say this anymore. You know, David, don't ever get caught in this trap, David, please. Don't ever call a woman beautiful, because that'll be the end of your political career, please. I want to make your life much easier, David. By the way, he's also got a great wife, I have to say. He's got a great wife. But, you know, I mean, I read a, a so-called Republican, who Ronald Reagan didn't like, by the way, and she didn't like him, but she got credit for being this Reagan speechwriter. Highly overrated. I don't know anything about her. I don't know her. Treats me badly, but that's okay. She called it wrong. She's called it wrong now for about eight years. But she said one thing that got me. 
She said, Kamala has one big advantage. She's a very beautiful woman. She's a beautiful woman. So I decided to go back and reread the clause. I'm not saying he's uh, — but I say that I am much better looking than her. I think I'm much better looking. Much better. I'm a better looking person than Kamala. No, I couldn't believe it. She said, you know, I had never heard that one. They said, no, her biggest advantage is that she's a beautiful woman. I'm going, huh. I never thought of that. I'm better looking than she is. In her speech yesterday, Kamala went full communist. You heard that? She went full communist. She wants to destroy our country. After causing catastrophic inflation, Comrade Kamala announced that she wants to institute socialist price controls. You saw that. Never worked before. Never, ever worked. This is the Maduro plan, Venezuela. Maduro plan of, like, the old Soviet Union. This is — they tried it. How did the Soviet Union work out? It became Russia, a smaller version. It was a smaller version. It will cause rationing, hunger, and skyrocketing prices, just like their Inflation Reduction Act caused. One of the great scams of all time. They got it approved with a beautiful name, Inflation Reduction, because inflation under their system has been so bad. It's gone up much more than 50 percent. You know, they say 30, 40, 50, much more. People are being devastated. They're being devastated. But it's gone way up, way up. And they made a big mistake yesterday in her speech. I think she said, I, I had to play it back. You know, I love the playback controls you have nowadays. They used to call it TiVo. Now they have TiVo all the — I think it's the single greatest invention. It's better than television. Because television would drive you crazy if you couldn't do a playback, right? Now I can play back. I heard the statement, and I heard that statement that she made. And I said, you know, she made a statement yesterday that from her time in office, essentially, prices have gone up by 50 percent, something like I said, did she just say that? I said, that speechwriter is going to be fired. In fact, we took that section, and we actually made a commercial on it. And we got the best commercial of the week. And we didn't do anything. We just played her back. But here's the problem. The things that she said yesterday don't work. They have never worked. They've never been used many times before in many other countries. They've never worked. They've just never worked. They've been used oftentimes, many countries. And in every single event, it ruined those countries. It's a communist system. It's what her father, a Marxist — he was a Marxist — it's what her father taught her from a young girl growing up. She's promising to hand out things she can't deliver. She can never deliver them. She'll never get them approved. Just like when she and Crooked Joe tried to give away student debt. Remember? She wanted to pay. How did that work out? Not too good. The students are saying, I love him because of student debt, but he got rejected. And this will be rejected even more so because what they're doing is a communist takeover of our country. Her plan is very dangerous because it may sound good politically, and that's the problem. And we have to be very careful, because when somebody gets up and says, we're going to give you everything, 25000 for a house, we're going to give you all sorts of little goodies, free health care, we're going to give you everything, universal health care. It sounds so beautiful. And I told my people, you got to be very careful. I told the Republican Party, you have to be very careful. She's given all this away. And somebody that really isn't into it — you know, we're largely — even groups like this — we're into it. We think about it all the time. We want to take back our country. We want to save our country. When somebody's given — and you understand how bad this stuff is. This is communist. This is Marxist. This is fascist. But you know what? It's dangerous, because she's saying that she's going to give away things that she'll never be able to get approved. She wants to increase the number of justices or the United States Supreme Court to 27. 27. I used to hear she was going up to 11, and then I heard it was 13, but then they said that's an unlucky number, so they went to 15. Yesterday, for the first time, I heard 27. We'll have to rebuild the entire Supreme Court because they won't have enough room for the judges. They won't have enough. And by the way, how courageous were our justices of the United States Supreme Court?
what they did. They're saving our country. They're actually saving our country. What they've done is, I mean, they've passed things that were so important, and they did it for the right, not for the wrong. They did it for — they did the right thing. They did the right thing. And I, I just have such respect for them. The job they've done against — and, you know, the radical left plays the ref. You know the great Bobby Knight? He supported me. He used to fight with the referees all the time. Scream at him, Bobby, Bobby, please, don't do that. It's not going to work. He said, you're right. It's not going to work now. It's going to work for the next one. And the next call, there'd be a flagrant foul, and they wouldn't call it. They didn't want to get screamed at. The radical left harasses our judges and harasses our justices. They scream at them. They call them names. They say they're incompetent. They're horrible. They're this. They're that. They should be impeached. They're constantly saying they should be impeached. But they're screaming. And you know what? It has an effect on some people. But so far, they've been very strong. It's really horrible. I believe it's illegal what they do. And it's a — it's a — and just, I'm trying to give you things that you've never heard before, and this is true. I believe they are playing the ref. They're constantly criticizing our great — some of our greatest justices and a lot of great judges. You know, I kept hearing so much about the Florida case, because, you know, they weaponized our system, our government totally weaponized it. First time it's ever happened. And they said, my biggest case is in Florida, Florida, Florida. And we had a very uh, brilliant — I don't know the judge, but a fair and very brilliant judge who took tremendous abuse. Would have been so easy for her to just rule against me. But she didn't do that. She ruled for, She threw out the whole case. It was thrown out. That was a big case. And I have such respect for her, because she is, in fact, brilliant. But they were hitting her so hard. She's going too slow. She's that. She should be removed immediately from office. She, these people are horrible. I really think — I really think it's illegal what they do with judges and justices. They're playing the ref no different than Bobby Knight. And he was great. He endorsed me, and Indiana was mine. He was a great coach. He's the last coach to go undefeated. I guess he was like 38 at all. For some reason, they've never had another college team since then. That was many years ago. And he came out in favor of Donald Trump, and it was a big thing. I won Indiana by a landslide, because when Bobby Knight from Indiana endorses you, you win. Sort of like when I endorse you, you win, too. We have a very good record of endorsement. But — but we can't let these radical left thugs constantly scream at our judges and say, we're going to impeach him, we're going to take him out of office or her, we're going to do horrible things to him. Continuous — when you heard Schumer get up on the stairs of the courthouse, Supreme Court, and talk about, Kavanaugh, we're going to get you, Kavanaugh. We're going to hit you, or whatever the hell he said. If a mobster said that, they'd be put in jail immediately. He, frankly, should have been put in jail, or certainly spoken to very strongly. He got lucky. He got lucky. He had a couple of guys that didn't want to do it. And I understand that also. But he got lucky. But, you know, we can't let them do that. And I just want to pay my respect to uh, the judges that have suffered abuse at the hands of the radical left lunatics. And I really admire them for being — because you know what? All they have to do to end it is rule against me or whatever it is. If they say, Trump, you're guilty, oh, now all of a sudden they say, oh, that's the last time they ever say bad. But they can't do it because these people have weaponized the Justice Department, including local DAs and local attorney generals, and Fani, Fani, you know, Fani spelled F-A-N-I. My name is Fani, F-A-N-I. I don't figure it. You put a little French accent on the word with her lover Wade, right? Lover Wade, we call him, lover boy Wade. She hired and paid him almost a million dollars because of his great knowledge of the law. He never did it before. With us today is Daniel Campos, a pilot in Venezuela who now lives in Pennsylvania. Great gentleman. 
Daniel came to tell us what you think of Kamala Harris leading our country into socialism. We're being led into socialism, but the socialism will be short-lived. It's going into communism. If you would have told me, and if you remember many times during State of the Union, I would say, we will never have a socialist country, and everybody would applaud. But I was right, because we're really, I think, skipping socialism. We're going into communism. When they weaponize our government like this, that's what they do in third world countries. That's what they do in South American horror shows. That's what they do in banana republics. They've weaponized it. But our, I believe ours is even more corrupt. The New York court system is totally corrupt. They use the state and the city to go after me. They take top people in the Department of Justice and put them in the Attorney General, Letitia James. She campaigned on, I will get Trump. And they then go there, and then they go into the Manhattan DA's office. They use Hillary Clinton's lawyer and the Democrats' law firm to leave the firm and go into the DA's office in order to prosecute Donald Trump, free of charge. They're not going to charge. Then he writes a book. This guy writes a book before the thing even went anywhere. And in the book, he said, I do it for free. It's so great. These are corrupt people, and we have to call them out. So remember the term, playing the ref with our judges and our justices should be punishable by very serious fines and beyond that. But I'd like to ask, because we're, we're into that whole system, and I'd like to call up Daniel, please. Come up and tell us about your experience in living in a country that went very, very bad, went radical left, and the experience has not been good. Please come up. Thank you. All right. Uh, first of all, hi, everybody. Thank you for coming here and supporting the president. I'm going to say the first part of the speech, well, of my story in English. Then I'm going to repeat it in Spanish in order to allow our Latino voters to understand and hear what the situation is going on. All right. First of all, as the president already said, I'm from Venezuela. I left the country in 2007 because of communism. I still have family there. There's been family that left my ha that has left even before me or are continuously living little by little. But going further back, my grandparents from my mom's side were from Cuba. They were, my, they were at university when the communist revolution was going on and they end up leaving to Venezuela. They only have the money they received for us, their wedding present, and they were living in a mid-house, going to school, and trying to move, you know, move ahead. My granddad ended up becoming a doctor and had a family raising three children, my mom and my two uncles. When in the early 1990s, Chavez did a military coup, and right after he ran for president, my granddad saw the similarities to what was happening in Cuba, and he told everybody that would listen to him that he was coming. And everybody was like, no, nah, this is Venezuela. This is not Cuba. This will never happen to us. And guess what? It happened to us. And has been happening to other Latin American countries as well. So when they tell you here, it will never happen, that's not true. We lived it, now here we are. So in 2007, we ended up leaving because the socialists and the government started changing the education system to make it more like the Cuban education system. It might ring a bell to what's going on here as well. So it's extremely important for everybody to keep this in mind. And if you don't mind, I'm going to switch to Spanish for our Latino speakers. Thank you. Para todos los Latinos Americanos, gracias por venir aquí y soportar al Presidente Trump. Es importante que entendamos que lo que ha pasado en nuestros países en Latinoamérica puede pasar aquí. Como mencioné, mi abuel mis abuelos son de Cuba, se fueron por el comunismo, llegaron a Venezuela, 
sin ninguna base, solo un poco de dinero, salieron adelante y se mi abuelo se convirtió en doctor y crió a mi madre y a mis dos tíos. Cuando Chávez hizo el atentado, el, perdón, el, el golpe de Estado y después corrió por presidente, mi abuelo trató de advertir a todo el mundo que esto era exactamente como Cuba. Nadie le hizo caso. ¿Qué pasó? Chávez entró y 20, 20 años después aquí estamos. Tienen que recordar que si pasó en un lugar, puede pasar aquí también. No crean que porque Estados Unidos, gran economía, no puede pasar. Puede pasar y vamos encaminados, al menos que tomemos un paso diferente. Y yo por eso pienso que Trump es la mejor persona para hacerlo. Going back in English, that we are going on a path that is taking us to what Venezuela became. And the only way right now that we can avoid keep going down that path is making Trump president again. What a fantastic job. I said, have you done that before? He said, no, sir. You are something. All right. Next pilot. What office is he going to run for? I think we're going to endorse him so fast. Thank you very much. No, it's a, such a problem because, you know, it's a very dangerous situation. She's giving everybody free everything. Not going to ever, it's never going to happen. Remember, the college debt, the student debt they were going to give, it never happened. It was just all talk. Then he said, after getting totally rejected, uh, he came up with another plan, which is even dumber. But what happens is they talk. These things will never happen, but it's very dangerous because politically, maybe somebody says, oh, that's great, that's great. It's the end of our country. We can't do it. We can't do it. So I really appreciate that. That was beautiful. It was so well done. Amazing. Thank you. In addition to defeating Kamala Harris, you need to defeat your terrible Democrat Senator Bob Casey. You know, I've been there for — I've been in Washington for a long time. I mean, I barely met the guy. You know, most of these guys I get to meet in one form or another, for better or worse. I, I, I hardly know this guy. I, I never really remember meeting him. He obviously created great — a great impression. But he's not a hard worker. He's cruising on his father's past. I met the father. I think I knew the father better than I knew the son. But Bob Casey voted for every bill that caused the worst inflation in the history of our country, in my opinion. They call it decades, but I believe it's the history of our country because they're not using the real things. Like mortgage rates went from 2 percent to 10 percent. They don't say that. That's inflation. They don't say that. And you can't get any money at 10 percent, either. We had it down to 2 and 2.4, 2.5 .2 And now you can't get the money at 10 percent. They don't have any money. He voted to open borders and the war on Pennsylvania energy. You know, Bob Casey voted against all of this stuff, against your state. But you don't know, because, you know, you have other jobs. You're not watching Bob Casey. That's why you need to fire Bob Casey, and you have to elect a man named David McCormick for the U.S. Senate. Dave is strong on borders, great on taxes. He wants to reduce your taxes. You know, all my life, I've been involved, usually from the other side. It's called writing checks. But I've been involved. I've made lots of contributions to politicians all my life. And politicians always talk about, we will lower your taxes. We will. That's all they talked about, is lowering taxes. This is the only group I've ever seen where they say, we are going to increase your taxes. I've never heard of it before. And by four times, I gave you the biggest tax cut in the history of our country. And bigger than the Reagan tax cuts. And They expire in a few months, and they want to not renew them. If that's the case, you're going to pay four times the tax that you're paying right now. And then they, on top of that, want to increase your taxes. 
to pay for the Green New Scam. You know what the Green New Scam is? The oceans will rise one-eighth of an inch over the next 400 years. But they don't talk about a madman that's building nuclear missiles right now. That's your real global warming. It's not this. Your global warming is war. Your global warming is going to be nuclear weapons. Nobody talks about that. They don't ever mention it. But they talk about an ocean that's rising, which will give you slightly more beachfront property if it happens. Now, think of it. But they don't talk about somebody that's got very evil intentions. Look at Iran. I stopped them from building a nuclear weapon. But this guy is going to give it up. He's going to give it up. So, David McCormick, and I've known him for a long time. He's an ama amazing man, a tremendous education, tremendous military background. And he's a very strong guy, and he loves the state. I really hope you give him a chance. It's not easy. And I was just talking to him. You know, you, a guy's been in office for years. He's done nothing. He's done nothing. In that way, it's good. But in another way, it's tough. Because, you know, you've seen his name a little bit. You don't even see his name. Most people don't even know. If you ask who are the senators, they may choose the one that didn't do so well in a debate, but one, right? He didn't do too well in a debate. I wonder who did worse in the debate, Biden or him? I think maybe Biden did. I think, actually, he's made more sense than a lot of other people over the last few months, in all fairness. He actually has. I commend him on that. But nobody knows about Casey. Nobody knows about him, even though he's been there for years. His father was there for years. I just want to ask, it's very important because we want to turn our country around. We need to get great representation even beyond the presidency. And this is a dead seat. It's a seat that voted with this group of people, Barack Hussein Obama and Biden. And her, because she was a part of it. You know, she's now trying to claim that she has nothing to do with Biden. She had nothing to do with the administration. They put him on. Now, maybe they change it, because I said this a couple of days ago. Usually, when I say something, they immediately change it, so I can't say it anymore. But they gave him speaking on Monday night. Now, maybe they ch — have they changed it? I don't think so. Monday night is considered on a convention Death Valley. It's Death Valley because people aren't watching Monday night. So they deposed a president. It was a coup of a president. This was a coup. Nancy Pelosi, crazy Nancy. She's crazy as a bedbug. Crazy Nancy went in and laid it out. And she never thought he was good, because she's smart, cunning, nasty, mean. But she's crazy. And she went in and she said, you're getting out. And he said, no, I'm not. Only God will get me out, right? Isn't that what he said? Only God. And within about 24 hours, he announced that he was going to get out. And he, you know, he won it. He went through a primary system. She didn't. He beat her in the primary. She ran along with 22 people. She ran. She was the first one out because she was no good. She was no good. And now she's running. And this is not what our country is all about. And he feels terrible, and he's a very angry man. I watched him yesterday. He's a very angry man. I think he hates them more than he hates Donald Trump, and that's hard to believe. I really do. He's an angry man, and he should be an angry man. They walked in, and they stole the presidency of the United States from him. Now, I think he was a terrible president. I think he was the worst president in the history of our country. I think that Jimmy Carter is the happiest man on Earth today. He's not a young man. Because Jimmy Carter's presidency was brilliant, brilliant by comparison to this. But she was a big part of it, and she's going to be an even bigger part. Now she wants to give our whole country away. And just as Daniel and others have said, I mean, it's it, our country is going to our country is going to die. And yet it's scary because she's given so much away. I mean, who's not going to vote to get some money for house? It's never going to happen. It's trillions of dollars. It's never going to happen. But who's going to vote? I mean, people will maybe vote for this. I said before, it may be good politics, but it's going to destroy — it's going to destroy our country. The Washington Post, one of the most evil print journalism — it's not — I mean, they've lost a lot of — a lot of people over the last couple of years. It's nasty. They came out with an editorial excoriating her. 
Actually, I, I spoke with Jeff Bezos, Bezos just for the almost, almost the first time. I met him once before, and he was so complimentary on the way we handle the uh, horrible situation that took place recently. And uh, I appreciated that, but we talked a little bit about the paper and their radical left paper. They excoriated her in today's editorial, excoriated her. And I give the Washington Post tremendous credit. I believe the New York Times did or is about to do the same thing. But when they're going after somebody uh, because they're, they're far, far, it's not even left. Every single country that's done this, it's been done many times because it's so easy to say, I'm going to give you this, I'm going to give you that, we're going to put price controls on food. How do they do that? We're going to say the beans are going to cost this, cereal's going to cost it. Does it work? And what happens is you end up with huge inflation and no product because you can't make it anymore because they lose money hand over fist. So it doesn't work. But it's scary because sometimes people vote for it because it sounds good. It sounds good, but it's really bad. We're going to give you tax cuts. We're going to give you additional tax cuts. We made our country wealthy. We made our country better than it had ever been before. And we did it. We did it. We had, uh, you know, the, the big difference is we had uh, a man serving for three and a half years with her at his side. And we had us. and. Prior, we did a great job on COVID, never got the credit. I got great, great credit for the economy, in all fairness to the fake news. I got great credit for the economy, great credit for the military. We defeated ISIS. We had no new wars. We rebuilt our military. Think of that. We came up with a new and very important organization, to put it mildly. First time since the Air Force, almost 80 years, Space Force, and we took space where we were languishing to China, falling way behind China and Russia. We took space, and now we're dominating them. We put some incredible people in there. Space Force has been so important. It'll end up being one of our truly important already is. I mean, it's coordinating with you, but we created Space Force. We did so many things right to try medically, right to try. If you're terminally ill, you had no right to get medicine. Now you sign a document. They tried to get that for 58 years. 58 years, they were unable to get it. I sat everybody down, the labs, the doctors, the insurance companies, and the country because they didn't want to be sued. Somebody's terminally ill, they take something, they die, and then the family sues them for killing the mother, the father, the sister, the brother. And I said, no, you're going to sign a document, and you're not going to sue anybody, but you're going to go home, and you're going to have the greatest drugs in the world that won't be approved for another four or five years of terminally ill. And we have saved thousands and thousands of lives. Thousands. So we did a lot, and we have a lot of other things planned. Oh, oh, by the way, all of that great work done, we have the greatest lab technicians, the greatest doctors, the greatest laboratories in the world. All of that under her system gets wiped out. They're close to a lot of great cures. I worked very hard on that. I also worked very hard on the FDA, getting them to bring it down, bring it down, because it was going to take an average of 12 years to get something approved. I got it down to five. I want to get it I wanted to get it down to 2 but things have to happen but we got it way way down and we came up with things and we have thousands of people that are living today that were considered terminally ill just a short while ago it's one of the things I'm most proud to go right to try and hopefully nobody in this room needs it but if you do you don't have to go to Asia you don't have to go to Europe or if you have no money, you go home and you die. That's what happens. You don't, mostly people don't have any hope. They go home and die. Now you have right to try, and thousands of people are living right now that would not be living. We're also pleased to be joined by a very special man, a friend of mine who's been a warrior from day one, Dan Muser, Congressman. Dan Muser. Thank you, Dan. Great job. Mrs. Muser, thank you. What a great, what a great job. Thank you. Thank you both for being here. He's really been, no, I'm telling you, he's been fantastic. A man who would defend me a lot on 
fake news, CNN. A former senator from your state who was your commonwealth, who was, frankly, uh, a very talented man. He was very good on — very good on television. He spent most of his time defending me. Rick Santorum, former senator. Rick, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I appreciate the defense. Thank you. Former Congressman Fred Keller. Fred, thank you very much, Fred. You look good. You look good. He looks good. Pennsylvania Treasurer Stacy Garrity. Thank you, Stacy. Great job you're doing. The next Congressman from Pennsylvania's 8th Congressional District, Rob Brenahan. Thank you. Rob, good. Great primary win. That was a big primary. I endorsed him. He went to a great job. That was a big win. Candidate for the 7th Congressional District, Ryan McKenzie. Ryan, thank you. Congratulations. A man who we picked because, unlike a lot of states, including this one, we were leading by a lot. And then all of a sudden, a miracle happened. We had another miracle happen about uh, four weeks ago, too. But this was a big miracle, and uh, they found millions of votes. They found a lot of votes. But they didn't do that in North Carolina, where he was the head of the Republican Party. And I said, who is that guy? His name is Michael Watley, and we appointed him the head of the RNC, the Republican National Committee. And he is doing a fantastic job, really, really a great job. Thank you very much. He's going to keep their cheating down to a minimum, right? Maybe nothing, but, you know, we know them better. They won't stop. They won't stop. You know, we have an expression, too big to rig, right? Too big to rig. And we're leading by a lot, even though we now have to run against some — think of it, I spend $100 million? Now I have to run against somebody else. Is that fair? I think they should reimburse me for the hundred million. Who wants to collect? Does anybody want to go and collect? I'll get front row Joe to collect. The mayor, who's really a wonderful man, by the way, Mr. Mayor, it was good meeting you. Carl Curran. Thank you, Carl. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carl. Good man. New York's Broome County DA, Paul. Battisti, Paul Battisti. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Good job you're doing. I wish you were in Manhattan. It would be very We could use a good one in Manhattan. And Lackawanna County Commissioner Chris Shermack. Chris? Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Good job. On my first day back in the Oval Office, I will immediately sign an executive order directing every cabinet secretary and agency head to use every power we have to drive prices down. But we're going to drive them down in a capitalist way, not in a communist way. At the center of this effort will be to end Kamala's war on American energy, and we will drill, baby, drill. We're going to get your energy prices down. We're going to get your energy prices down by 50 percent. The Kamala presidency will mean death for Pennsylvania energy. Remember that. It'll mean death for Pennsylvania energy. Kamala imposed a natural gas export ban to cripple Pennsylvania energy producers. You do know that she's against this whole energy thing that you have going, which is by far the most important thing you have from an economic standpoint, a job standpoint. She's against it. Kamala supports a carbon tax on the working class, and she's vowed that she will ban fracking, which means 423,000 plus at least 150,000 jobs beyond that. Pennsylvania is going to always be fracking because we desperately need the energy and we desperately need the jobs. But she will end it. She will end it. In addition, your state and local government will be starved of billions of dollars in oil and gas revenue, which means higher taxes, lower property values, worse schools, and plunging quality of life in the great commonwealth of Pennsylvania that I love. I've spent a lot of time here. I told you I went to school here, the Wharton School of Finance at Penn. 
Under my leadership, we will make America energy independent and energy dominant, and Pennsylvania energy workers will lead the way. You're going to lead the way. It's big stuff. To further combat inflation, I will terminate Kamala Harris's Green New Scam. It's the greatest scam maybe ever played. And rescind all of the unspent funds. We're going to take those unspent funds and use them for roads and bridges, and we're going to give back a lot of money into the Treasury and pay down debt. To make both new and used cars more affordable, I will end the Biden-Harris electric vehicle mandate on day one, one of the most ridiculous things. One of the most ridiculous things. Kamala now claims to want to cut red tape, but in less than four years, she's buried American families in regulations costing a typical household much more than five thousand dollars per year. Think of that, just with their red tape. I will cancel Kamala's crushing regulatory onslaught, and I will immediately eliminate every costly job. Now, just so you know, I cut regulations more than any president in history by far. By far. So you can't say to me, well, why didn't you do it? With me, you can't say that on anything. I did do it. Everything I said. You know, they said, Promises made, promises kept. What I said, I kept. I mean, unless there was some crazy thing somewhere, but I got it done. I got it all done. Even the wall, I built hundreds of miles of wall, and I had to fight Congress. I had to fight the Senate like you wouldn't believe. I built hundreds of miles of wall. And I ended up taking it out and winning in court. We had 11 lawsuits by mostly Democrats like Nancy Pelosi. We had 11 different. We won every one of them. But think of it. I built the wall. I said, I'm taking it out of the military because our country is being invaded. This is an invasion of our country. And we built hundreds of miles of wall. Then we bu built and had made an extra 200 miles that we were going to use to expand it further than I ever said. And it was made and ready to be installed. And we had a rigged election. And what happened after that was they didn't want to do it, and they sold it for five cents on the dollar. Five cents. Very sophisticated stuff, too. To get economic relief to workers and families, I will make the Trump tax cuts permanent, and we will have no tax on tips, which she copied. She copied. You all know by now she came out a few days ago, and she said, there will be no tax. I said, I said that months ago. But here's one that she hasn't copied yet. To help seniors on fixed incomes who are suffering the ravages of horrible inflation caused by Crooked Joe and Kamala, there will be no tax on Social Security. So get out. And I get it done. I will get it done. They won't. They haven't even promised it to you, but they won't get it done if they do. And I will always protect Social Security and Medicare for our great seniors, just as I did for four incredible years. By contrast, Kamala Harris has a three-step plan to destroy Medicare and Social Security. She's going to destroy your Medicare. She's going to destroy your Social Security. First, she has thrown open our borders. Second, she is flooding our country with millions and millions of low-wage migrants and giving them welfare, free health care, food stamps, public benefits. And third, she wants to make them all citizens of the United States. Many of them coming from prison, many of them coming from mental institutions, and many are terrorists. She wants to make them citizens, dumping them onto Medicare and dumping them into your beautiful Social Security program. Remember, for four years, I saved Social Security. I never gave an increase. I never raised the age by five years, which is what they're going to end up doing. With me, it's staying the way it is. We have a lot of ways we're making money. We don't need to take it away from our seniors. The millions of illegal aliens pouring in under Border czar. She was the border czar, right? She was the border czar. Now, the last, about a month ago, she said, I wasn't the border czar. She was the border czar. But it doesn't matter. She was in charge of the border, 100 percent. But border czar Harris are coming in from the worst places, 
some of the most dangerous countries in the world. And as I said, they're emptying out their jails and prisons, and they're emptying out their mental institutions, and they're dumping them into our country. What's happening to our country is shocking. It's unacceptable. And we are going ha — we have no choice. We're going to do the largest deportation in the history of our country. We have no choice. Just this week in Coney Island, two Kamala migrants were arrested for the rape of a 46-year-old woman, throwing her to the ground and raping her with a knife to her throat. She thought they were going to kill her. She said, they weren't looking to rape me. They were looking to kill me. And it was a terrible thing. One of them had previously been arrested for raping another woman at a migrant shelter. But he was shielded from deportation by New York City's sanctuary laws, which Kamala Harris strongly supported and doesn't want to change. In Virginia, three weeks ago, a 54-year-old mother of four was leaving a 7-Eleven when she noticed an illegal alien trying to steal her car. When she tried to stop him, he ran her down and left her dead on the ground before going on to hit two more cars killing two other drivers. And in May, the leader of a Peruvian gang known as Las Killers was released from Border Patrol custody and set free into America and Kamala's direct orders. He said, set him free! Meanwhile, he was wanted for 23 murders in Peru. Kamala refuses even to call these criminals, and we're not going to use the term she said, illegal aliens. No, they are illegal aliens. But she said, don't ever use that term. But they're not just illegal aliens. Honestly, they're monsters. These are savage monsters. The Harris policy is to let thousands of migrant killers and rapists into our country. You know, she was asked the other day, but she didn't respond. We have detention centers where we have some of the worst criminals in the world in those detention centers from other countries, and not just South America. They come from Africa. They come from Asia. They come from the Middle East. They come from countries that are seriously crime-ridden. And those countries, the crimes are going way down, like Venezuela. We talked about Venezuela before. And think about Venezuela. Their crime is down 72 percent. They've gone to Caracas, and they've gone to different places in Venezuela. They've taken their murderers, their drug dealers, their rapists, their thugs, and they've taken them out of the country. They've said, you're going to the United States of America, and if you come back, we will kill you. And they are now living with us. All will be criminals soon. And don't forget, they're just getting used to the experience of being in a country where criminals are treated better, far better, than the people that are being hurt and victimized. And when they see that, and they're going to have levels of crime, I call it migrant crime. We'll call it Kamala migrant crime. She destroyed San Francisco. She destroyed Los Angeles. I call it migrant crime. She had something that she went with. You're not a criminal. It's a very minor offense if you steal anything from a store that's less than $950. Did you know that? So guys are walking into stores with — they walk into stores with a calculator. Keep it under $950, and nothing's going to happen. By the way, if it goes to $9,050, nothing happens either. What's happened in California with Governor Newsom and guys like this, people like this, is terrible. But Kamala, Kamala, what an environment, what a beautiful place, what a great place. The weather is so beautiful, the ocean, everything's beautiful. It's crime-ridden and horrible, and changes have to be made. The Trump policy is to keep these savage criminals the hell out of our country. They're going to be out of our country. If Kamala wins, you will have mass amnesty and citizenship for all. She wants to give all of these people citizenship in Venezuela. Their crime is down 72 percent. In other countries all over the world, their crime is way down. 
And in our country, wait till you see the real numbers, because they're not counting migrant crime, which is going to make our crime look like baby stuff. If I win, you will have the largest operation of police to take care of us. They have to take care of us. They want to take care of us. They want to do their job. As Border Patrol wants to do their job. And it's going to start on Inauguration Day, January 20th, 2025. It's going to start immediately. They want to do their job, and we don't let them. And if they do their job, and if they're a little bit strong about doing their job, they're dealing with a lot of very tough people. They take away their pension. They take away their job. They lose their family. They lose their house. They lose everything. They end up in squalor. And we're not going to do that. We're going to defend our great local police and law enforcement in general. We're going to defend them. We're going to defend them because we want them to protect us. And we're going to need them much more than ever before because the criminals pouring into our country by the millions. I believe the real number is over 20 million people. You don't hear that year. 10 million, 12 million, 40, even if it was, it's still so many. But I believe the real number is over 20 million people. That's larger than New York State. Kamala Harris wants to eliminate private health insurance and give free taxpayer-funded health care to every single illegal alien in the country. They want to give. And then you wonder, why do they come up? You know why they come up? Because guys like Newscom and others are saying, come up, come to our country, we'll give you health care. You know what they're doing to your school system is incredible. People are taking the seats of your children. Your children can't go to school. And you have people taking their seats that don't speak a word of English, come from a foreign country. And your kids aren't getting educated. Your kids are not getting educated. They're considered like secondary citizens. And this is Kamala and Joe to a lesser extent. Look, Joe, Joe's lost. He's forget him. By contrast, I'm going to keep the Affordable Care Act unless we can do something much better. We'll keep it, but we can do much better. It's too expensive for the people. They can't afford it. It's lousy health care. If we can do something better, we're working on it. If we can do something better, but we will never let anybody touch it unless we have something better. We're going to deliver lower prices, lower drug costs, and new options that will dramatically reduce the crushing burden on all American patients. And Kamala and Crooked Joe, they try and take credit for $35 insulin, but I was the one that did the $35 insulin, not them. Just kicked in during their administration. I remember a couple of years, a few years ago, I said, boy, oh, boy. They said, sir, this will kick in over the next two and a half, three years. I said, what about now? You couldn't do it. Just a process. I said, you know, I hope I win the presidency because I want to get credit for that. But, you know, he gets up there, oh, we got $35. I got it. Kamala Harris's Democrat Party is the party of health care for illegals. The Republican Party is the party of common sense. We really are the party of common sense, ultimately. So we will bring back our supply chains, the supply chains, and they've been so devastated. Our supply chains are devastated. You order something, and they say, sir, uh, that'll be four months. And then four months comes up, and they say it's going to be another four months. It's stuck at sea. They have no idea where the hell it is. But we're going to bring them back from China and other foreign countries, ending costly supply chain disruptions, and they are really bad. They're as bad now as they were, but we get used to it. We're living like a third-world country. Who thought? As we reduce burdens on domestic manufacturers, American workers will make our critical goods better and cheaper right here in the USA and right here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And I will, with David, revoke China's most favored nation's trade status. You know, they have a huge advantage because they are a growing nation. Well, we're a growing nation, too. We're a nation that is crippled. We are a horribly crippled nation. And China gets all of these advantages in trade because they consider themselves to be a growing nation. Well, we're a growing nation, too. And I did that already. I will pass what will be known as the Trump Reciprocal Trade Act if China 
or any other country makes us pay 100 or 200 percent tariff, we will make them pay a reciprocal tariff of 100 or 200 percent right back. You hurt us, we hurt you. It's called an eye for an eye. I will also restore peace through strength, and I will prevent World War III from happening. We will stop it. You know, when crooked Hillary Clinton was running against me, she said, look at him, listen to him. He will start a war, a world war. We had no wars other than I defeated ISIS in its entirety. 100% of the ISIS caliber. Listen to his rhetoric. Listen to his horrible tone. I said, that horrible tone is going to keep people from fighting us. And that's what happened. We had no wars. It's been 81 years since that happened for a president. No wars other than ending some wars that we're in and defeating ISIS. Two days ago, I watched a parade of the Taliban in Afghanistan. Did you see it? The Taliban, where they were showing all of our equipment that they took from America. $85 billion worth. Two days ago, celebrating three years of the defeat of America by these guys. And I knew him very well. Abdul was the head. Abdul was not playing games with me. We had, uh, you know, they were executing a lot of our soldiers. And I spoke to him. I said, Abdul, don't do it anymore. There'll be no more. Anyway, I said it pretty tough. And you know what? For 18 months, we didn't have one American soldier killed in Afghanistan. And then I left. And then I left. And this bunch of incompetent people took over, and it all started up again. And then they had the most embarrassing day in the history of our country, I thought. But she bragged about being the last person in the room that night, the night that they decided to do whatever they decided to do. In other words, she had the final vote, and she bragged about it. It's been the most embarrassing moment in the history, history of our country, Afghanistan. It, could have, it should have never, ever happened. We should have gotten out with dignity and strength. And you don't take your military out first. You take your military out last. They couldn't believe we did it. Under Trump, we will have no more wars, no more disruptions, and we will have prosperity and peace for all. And again, we're going to bring back that American dream for all of the young people in this audience and some of the old ones. This is how we will end the era of inflation, mayhem, and misery under Kamala and crooked Joe Biden and unleash safety, prosperity, and promise for Americans of every race, religion, color, and creed. Every single one of them are going to understand peace and wealth. And you're going to be a dominant — we're going to be a dominant force again. We're going to be respected as a country again. Right now, we're being laughed at. Together, we will deliver low taxes, low regulations, low energy costs, low interest rates, low inflation. We had almost no inflation during my four years, almost nothing. And they went up to 9.5 percent. And that number is a fake number because they don't add the worst categories was much higher than that. But it was record-setting inflation that everyone can — we're going to make sure — afford your groceries, afford a car, afford a home, low interest rates. We're going to get it all down. We will stop the invasion. We will end migrant crime. We will support our great police. We will strengthen our military, build a missile defense shield over the top of our country, an Iron Dome. It'll be a great Iron Dome. And much of it will be made right here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Why shouldn't we have that? Why shouldn't we have that? Other countries can have it, but we can't. It was our idea. It was our — you know, Ronald Reagan wanted it many years ago. But then, in all fairness, you didn't have the technology. Today, you do. We're going to have an Iron Dome to protect us from the lunatics out there. And we're going to keep critical race theory and transgender insanity the hell out of our schools. And we're going to keep men out of women's sports. No men in women's sports.
Did you see in the Olympics? They had two transitioned. They transitioned. Uh, they were men. They transitioned to women, and they were in the boxing. And a young Italian woman was boxing one of the transitioned men, and she got hit with a jab. Just boom. A jab is not like the hard. This is the harder one, right? If you're right-handed, boom. And she backed up. She said, what just hit me? I just got, got hit with a horse. What just hit me? Think of that. Then he did it again. Boom. And she said, OK, that's enough. Two jabs. Then the other one. And by the way, he went on to easily win the gold medal. He just walked through everybody. He won the gold medal. Then there was another one, a transitioned man. And he also won the gold medal. He transitioned, and he won the gold medal very easily. So the two fighters won the gold medals very easily. And she came out, the Italian girl, beautiful girl, very good boxer. And uh, she said, nobody's ever hit me like that. Two jabs. She said, I've never been hit. She just said, that's enough, that's enough. It's crazy. It's so demeaning to women. How about the weightlifting? Hundreds of pounds more, hundreds. Records that haven't been broken in 18 years. One-eighth of an ounce here, one-eighth of an ounce. And they can't do it. You could do it. They can't do it. And a guy comes out, excuse me, a transitioned person. Ping. How much more is that? Oh, that's 128 pounds more. How crazy is this? Our country has gone crazy. And we're going to put it back on track. We are the party of common sense. We will defend the Second Amendment, restore free speech, and we will secure our elections. Everyone will prosper. Every family will thrive. We're going to be a thriving country again. And every day will be filled with joy, opportunity, and hope. Right now, it's filled with sorrow. It's sorrow. People are so embarrassed by what's happening to our country. They're waiting for Iran to drop weapons all over Israel. But it hasn't happened. You know why? Because our country is willing to pay them billions and billions of dollars. How about where they negotiate? I had 58 people. We negotiated, and we didn't pay. 58 hostages I got out, 59, I think, and got them out even from North Korea, the toughest. Had a good relationship with Kim Jong-un, but I got him out. But you never pay, because once you pay, you're going to pay. How about we pay $6 billion, $6 billion, and we get some out. And in the case of Russia, they get the Prince of Doom. You know who the Prince of Doom? The greatest arms dealer, they say, in the history of the world. And they got him. And we also gave $6 billion. It's uh, so embarrassing. It's so embarrassing. And the world is watching. And you know, when you pay $6 billion, all of a sudden, people are going to be disappearing from the streets all over the place. And it's a very bad precedent is being set in many ways, including the weaponization of our government. You know, I could have done that with Hillary Clinton. And I said to myself, how would it look? We're trying to unify the country. How would it look if I had arrested and put in prison the wife of the President of the United States? I thought it was not good. And then they do that to me. They want to put me away. But you know what? I get indicted for you. To me, I'm just here. I'm just standing in their way. I said to them, fellas, you know, I was no fan of Hillary, but I said, how would it look if we put her in prison? We're going to put Hillary Clinton, the wife and a secretary of state, we're going to put her in prison. But we never did this stuff. And then I came along. It's double standard. They do. They want to do it to me. So far, they've been very unsuccessful, but they would like to. We must defeat Kamala Harris, and we must stop her country-destroying liberal agenda. Liberal like nobody's ever seen in the history of our country. So get your friends, get your family, register, volunteer, get out and vote, and vote for that guy right there, David.
The radical left Democrats rigged the presidential election in 2020, and we're not going to allow them to rig the presidential election in 2024. And we want a landslide. Not going to let it happen. Not going to — we're not going to have a country left. You know, you need two things to start. You need a strong, beautiful, fair border, and you need fair and free elections. And we have neither, right? We have neither. On November 5th, we will save our economy. We will rescue our middle class. We will reclaim our sovereignty and restore our borders. We will put America first, and we will fight, fight, fight. We're going to fight. We're going to fight for our country. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. But this is a very consequential Commonwealth, as we say, but this is a very consequential vote in Pennsylvania because they say that if you win Pennsylvania, you're going to win the whole thing. We cannot let these people — we cannot let these people win Pennsylvania. That includes David. Can't let it happen. And together, we will make America powerful again. We're going to make it powerful, powerful. We will make — America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. We will make America free again. And we will make America great again. Thank you very much, Pennsylvania.